Good afternoon once again. Uh, as a reminder, my name is Kevin. I'll be running the uh, media conferences the next three days, two and a half, I guess. Uh, Duke entered the locker room five minutes ago, so their cool down period, uh, if they choose to use the allotted time, is another five minutes. In the meantime, a few reminders. Again, please keep your uh, cell phone silenced if they're not already. Uh, recording is acceptable for audio only. Video recording is not acceptable. Uh, it will be available through the NCAA site, ncaa.com slash media hub. No flash photography, please. We have microphones on both sides of the room. When reporters have questions, please raise your hands and we will get the microphones to you as quickly as we can. Please be sure to introduce yourself by name and affiliation. When I, uh, excuse me, when asking questions of student athletes, please uh, address the student athlete so we know who should answer. We will have post game press conference quotes available in the media room upstairs, not too long after the conclusion of the press conferences. And the locker rooms are open to the media for a maximum of 30 minutes at the conclusion of each program's cooling off period. The athletic communications personnel for UConn, Anna Labonte, and for Duke, Lindy Brown, they'll be able to assist you further uh, following this press conference. Uh, for UConn, in addition to Coach Ariema, Gabby Williams, and Nafisa Collier will be joining us. And for those in the back who may not be able to see, for Duke, along with Coach McCauley, Lexi Brown, and Rebecca Greenwell will be with us. Just a reminder of the format, we will ask both coaches to give an opening statement that shouldn't last more than two minutes. They will be up here along with the student athletes who will then answer your questions for eight minutes. After the student athletes are dismissed at that time, questions are open for the coaches. That should last 10 minutes. Again, following those sessions, please find either Anna or Lindy uh, for UConn and Duke. Thank you. One, one, port, one important note, if you haven't seen it on the box score, is the attendance, 10,658.
Joining us from the Duke Blue Devils, Lexi Brown, Liana Odom, and, and Faith Suggs, along with head coach Joanne P. McCauley. Coach, we would like to begin with an opening statement from you, and then we'll open it up for questions for the student athletes only. The student athletes will then be dismissed, and then we'll have questions for you specifically. So if you could please begin with an opening statement. Uh, yeah, just um, obviously a, a strong, tough game um, for us. I, I think uh, I like her turnovers. I think that's good. Um, I hate the fact that we're out-rebounded. I think that's really bad. And I think that when that happens, uh, good things can happen for the other team, which they did. Um, I'm very proud of our team. I like our team a lot. I think we've handled a lot, a lot of adversity. And we've had some excellent leadership and playing our best basketball in a lot of ways at this time of year, which has been great. Um, we're just going to have to keep battling, you know, keep getting after it a little bit. Um, be more consistent with our rebounding. I love that Aaron had eight. I love that uh, Nay had eight. But there's a big drop off after that. And, you know, you see they've got 12 and 11 and seven. Um, so that kind of, that certainly helps the game. Uh, we need to get to the free throw line more. We did not. And got to credit some good defense by Connecticut. And uh, like I said, I'm really proud of our team. And, and I certainly hope Connecticut does well. Thank you, Coach. At this time, we'll open up the floor for questions for the student athletes. If you have any, please raise your hand. <coughs> up here in the front, Doug. Uh, Doug Feinberg, the AP. Lexi, you guys cut it to, I think, 13 in the third quarter, and then they held you without a point for the rest of the period. Just is their defense that tough to play against? Was there anything that they were doing special besides the triangle on two and you and, and Becca that caused problems for you guys? Um, no, I just think we, we missed a lot of easy ones, some layups we missed, um, some wide open shots we missed. Uh, I think their defense was solid, but I mean, it wasn't something that we couldn't handle. I just think it was just us locking in offensively and, and um, knocking shots down because I think we were getting enough stops. We just needed to convert a little bit better. Thank you. Additional questions? Up here on the right. Lexi, Coach P talked about turnovers and limiting turnovers today with only 10. You had seven steals yourself. How proud are you of the way that you guys were calm with keeping those turnovers down to 10? Yeah, I mean, it was something we've been talking about all week, uh, not turning the ball over, you know, fueling their transition offense. I, I think I had the most turnovers, actually. So I'm really proud of everybody um, for handling themselves offensively, even with their pressure. Um, I think we had two in the second half total. Um, so that's awesome for us. Um, something that I wish we could build on for uh, future games. But I mean, I think that's something super positive to end the year on. Over here on the left. Lexi, Howard Mendel, High Post Hoops. Just wondering, in light of the way you're able to manage the game and uh, you know turn them over as much as you were, what do you think that says about your ability to do that at the next level? Um, I just think I've worked hard on, on defense. You know, I've been Growing up, I wasn't the most athletic person, um, so I've learned, you know, angles, reading people's eyes, jumping passing lanes. Um, I think I'll be able to translate that to the next level because defense is something that not everybody wants to do, and I love it. Um, it's something that I'm, I'm super proud of myself for. Over here on the right, please identify yourself and your affiliation. Rebecca Fiorentino with Duke. Thank you. Nay, your third game in the NCAA with 20 or more points. Is this just the beginning for you? Um, you know what? My teammates gave me the ball in perfect position, and luckily I was able to score. So it could be a beginning, and I'm looking forward to next year. Again, with a uh, question on the right. Faith, two questions for you, really. What does it mean to have Nay for another year to see the potential that she has given that what she'd produced these past three games? I think it's about time. Um, <laughs> I'm excited. We're all excited. I told her uh, next season I better not see a, a game where she's 20 under. I want to see it every time. She gives people energy. She keeps going, and no one can guard her. So it was exciting. And for Lexi, what did she mean having her as a leader and what she has meant to you here at Duke? Le Lexi's been great. Um, you know, she's one of our – she is the most competitive person on this team. 
she may get annoying and you may want to fight her every, every second, but she's someone who teaches you how to be competitive. She really is. The way she plays defense, you feel off of it. Her energy, her steals, it's just really fun to play with someone like Lexi. And anybody in the future is lucky to play with her. Thank you. Doug, up here on the right. Lexi, I know you had only a couple years at Duke, but just put in perspective of what your career was like there and just I'm guessing how proud you were to have put on a Duke uniform for your last couple years of your career. Yeah, no, coming uh, to Duke has been amazing. Um, the relationships I've built um, in these three years here have been incredible. Um, you know, basketball has been so much fun. I mean, playing with people like Faith and Nay, um, I could, the list can go on. Um, this is the most fun I've definitely had playing uh, college basketball. I mean, we've had our ups and downs, and I think we, we handled it. Um, as best as any team could have handled it. And then taking things off the basketball court, being at Duke has been, you know, life changing. I mean, the people I've met, the connections I've made, um, the people that I've run into on campus uh, at basketball games um, has been incredible. Um, definitely something that I'm super, I mean, the decision I made is something I'm super happy with and I wouldn't change it for anything. Any additional questions? Over here on the left. I'm Jerry Longman with the New York Times. So for all the players, I was wondering, now that you've played um, South Carolina and UConn, I wonder if you could sort of size up, um, for all that Asia Wilson's accomplished in her career, she's 0-4 against UConn and never been within 10 points. Yikes. And I'm sort of wondering, do you think that South Carolina can beat UConn? And if so, what would they have to do? <laughs> Lexi? Um, I think they could beat UConn. I think we could have beat UConn. Um, I think that people just need to not play the UConn on the jersey. I mean, there's of course, they're a super talented team, super competitive, but Asia is probably one of the most competitive players that I've played against or and have watched. And I think she, I think she can carry that team. Um, they feed off of her energy, um, and she's a super energetic player. And you know, I'm, I, I'm definitely rooting for South Carolina. But you know, UConn is a great team, and if they win it, I mean, it's, it's only because they deserve to. Faith, anything to add? Um, I agree with Lex 100%. Um, I think for them to beat UConn, I think that they need to stay together. Um, playing a team like that, you can have moments where you have um, emotional lapses, you break away from each other, but Coach P says when things don't go right or not perfect, you stay together and you trust one another. And I think that if a team can do that, then they can beat them. And Leon? They just need to play together, play hard, <clears throat> and focus on themselves. I mean, as a team, and focus on as a team to play together, and I think they can when? Any other questions for our student athletes? Ladies, thank you for joining us. Congratulations on a terrific season. Ready? We now have 10 minutes with Coach McCauley. Any questions for Coach? Up here, Doug? All right. Hey, Coach. Doug Feinberg, the AP. Hi Same thing as Lexi. I mean, you guys, I think, cut it in the first half to seven, then they scored about five minutes ahead of you without a basket or point, and then the same thing in the third quarter. Was it something they were doing defensively or a combination of things? What was the, the offensive laps for? I think um, you just got to be prepared for the whole 40 minutes, and I think as you make runs, uh, Connecticut is very good about responding to that. And I think you just got to keep going and, and have the immediacy and the intensity and, and the smarts um, that when you're making a run, I mean, I, I know that we got a little bit faster when we were making a run. Well, we did some very good things, but we also turned the ball over and did some things that you can't do. So, um, or maybe took a quick shot or something that you want to make them play defense longer. So, you know, when you've had that much success as a Connecticut team has over years and years and years and it gets passed down, there's that confidence of, you know, they keep coming at you and you gotta, you gotta be ready for it. And you gotta be ready to make the stops continuously. And, you know, I think that we did in circumstances, but we couldn't get it consistently across the board. And that's what you have to do. I mean, cause they're gonna keep coming at you. They have too much experience not to, especially with um, uh, Gabby and, and Nurse. I mean, they've got too much experience. Thank you. Over here to the left. 
Uh, Coach Howard McDowell, High Post Hoops. Um, curious, you know, I've spoke to Lexi briefly about it, but uh, what kind of player you see her being at the WNBA level? And also, same question, but for uh, Rebecca Greenwell, uh, who's projected to be drafted as well this year. Yeah, um, Lexi's a, a great player for the next level because she's so diverse. I mean, she, first of all, she's going to play both sides of the ball for you. So you're not just signing offense or defense, you're getting both. Um, and she's going to get that done. She also can play the point or the two. And she, so I, she's a little small for the two at that, you know, that, but she can still do it. You know, she can still get it done because she's such an excellent shooter. Uh, she's got a work ethic and a commitment to the game that goes back when she was just a little girl with her dad. And um, I think there are no limits to what she can do with those kind of great players around her. I mean, there's some, obviously, as you know, fabulous players in the league. And I, for some teams, she's really just a lot of things. And you know they've got their roster limitations, right? So you've got to get a lot with each person that signed. And I just think she'll be terrific in the right place and, and learn a lot. You know, uh, I don't think she'll mind being a rookie and learning the ropes a little bit, uh, being taught by the older players. Uh, but I just think she's fantastic and she loves the game, very passionate about the game and uh, committed to the game. So that's a great thing. Uh, for Becca, you know, just as a sharp shooter, again, with around excellent players where she can spot up and really be a difference maker off the pass, uh, that's her game. And she brings intangibles because she does work so hard. She'll take advantage of any opportunity given to her and be really committed. So the, the two of them are pretty special that way relative to work ethic. Their talents are different, but they're very special players. And I'm hoping for both of them that they can find something exciting for them in the future. We have a question on the right. Rebecca. Oh, yeah, okay. Coach, from the very beginning at Italy to now, what, how proud are you of this team and the way that they've been able to accomplish with all the obstacles that they have been through? Who would have, who would have thunk it? You know, when we think about Italy and, and having everybody healthy and the way we played without Becca, Bego, and Lexi in that very difficult game against the pro team and you know, it, it was extraordinary. And then to see what we had to go through through the year, you know, I just think not to mention a special visit from a Chinese coach who taught us a great deal as well. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. It's been an incredible year at Duke. I'm very proud of the team. It's not been perfect. Um, those three point guards have had to sit through this and see it, and they're all coming back. And so they're excited, uh, motivated, and I think everyone's willing to take the lessons. Uh, but, you know, I, I, again, we don't have 35 wins, um, but we have incredible stories and uh, incredible opportunities to be brave. And you need to be brave a lot in life. I think we all know that as adults. And this team got a lot of those lessons. Question here. Uh, Jim Fuller, New Haven Register. You got seven points in the first minute, and mm -hmm. they had eight points in the last minute of the half. How, how, how difficult does that make you? I mean, you can't minimize that damage going into the second half instead of maybe it's an eight-point game instead of a 20-point yeah. game. Yeah, it's a problem, too, because I have to burn a timeout to get everyone to calm down. I mean, um, no, I mean, it's just, again, they, they're a team that plays with terrific runs, and you look at the rebounding second shots they got in the transition, and, and that spells the game pretty quickly there. Uh, they're, they're in terrific shape. They can play forever. And, um, yeah, that was problematic for sure. The, the runs were, and... Uh, I felt good about coming out the first time out. I thought we did settle down. I thought we did play, um, which was great. But that was for a quarter, you know, and it needs to continue. So, um, again, I'm very, very proud of my team. Um, I, I can only say that for what we've been through. And Connecticut's a great team. And, and I know they were all speculating here. As far as I'm concerned, the team that beat you in the tournament is the one that needs to win it. Uh, that, so, so I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if I share all this dialogue to my left. I, I hope Connecticut does well, and um, I'm sure they will. Um, but that's just how I feel about things. Question here to the right. Marvin Chambers, 4.0 Sports Media. Coach, it's easy to say and prepare for Connecticut. How do you simulate and prepare the athleticism, mm -hmm. you know, um, the quickness and practice to get ready for a team like Connecticut? Yeah, that's a great question, you know, and I think actually it's an advantage to play them like at the time we did relative to having more prep time. Uh, we have a heck of a scout team at Duke if you'd like to check them out. They're pretty good. Um, and so we had them for two full days in prepping for Connecticut. I think it's very difficult to play them now because you have no time, right? You've played and you have no time. There's no scout guys coming in and, 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 and that's all you got. And, we, and so I think that uh, getting exposure to the transition speed, um, 
uh, physicality, of course, and finishing with contact and those things. So I, I definitely think it's much harder now in the second game. It just is. I mean, and you could say, well, we've played against them before and that type of thing, but I still say it's a difficult, difficult thing to turn around very quickly. Over here to the left, a couple questions. Uh, Spencer Levy, Duke Chronicle. Um, what was it like uh, playing in the Sweet 16 with three grad students? <laughs> We are a smart team in the Sweet 16. That's what we are. Um, just so proud of them. Again, this story, I know, you guys, it's not basketball, but it's, it's never going to happen again. It's history making. Three women in graduate school at Duke playing basketball, um, two of which are the go-to players. <laughs> and, and Bagel could have been if we could have had her longer. Um, we only get her for one year, which is very sad. So no, we're very proud of that story. Um, it, it's very hard to balance the workload that they have in a business school. And I think it's really interesting how the business school got around them and came to the games. And they all had all these smart signs. You know, they just weren't your basic signs. Um, but I, I thought that was great. And we're very proud of them. And I'm sure it will never happen again. So I just want to say we did make history for any history buffs out there. But we're very proud of them. Yes, sir. Cleveland from the Waterbury Republican American newspaper. You mentioned briefly UConn's seniors and what their experience mm -hmm. meant today. Can you just talk a little bit more about Gabby Williams? 15 points, mm -hmm. seven rebounds, six assists today. I mean, she did a little bit of everything. She always does. I mean, I don't know her personally, but she seems just fabulous. I mean, uh, she seems low maintenance, wonderful to coach, always goes hard. I think I'm going to echo Jay Billis. Jay Billis loves her, talks about her all the time as a, just a wonderful player in women's basketball. I'm going to go with him and be on that, that club, the Gabby Williams fan club, because I think that uh, not only is she so consistent, but I mean, she just doesn't bat an eye to anything. She competes at an Olympic level of focus. And um, obviously, she, I'm sure she's learned a great deal from uh, Gino and his staff and everything. But I tell you what, she's a very special player. And um, they just don't come around very much. And she's the closest thing to Maya Moore to me. I, I know she, without the outside shooting as much, but still with that body type and the way she's consistent, um, she's very clever and very good. And she was a big problem for us. One more question for Coach McCauley over here to the left. Uh, Coach Howard Magdal, um, just wanted to give you a chance to clarify. Uh, you were asked about uh, comments you had previously made about Azure Stevens mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and by the Duke Chronicle, and you'd said you were completely misquoted. I saw mm -hmm. the Chronicle earlier today posted audio that matches with the comments they said. Just mm -hmm. wanted to see uh, you know, if you had any clarification you wanted to make about that. No, I, again, it's all out of context, and I don't think this is the time for that. I think as we're very proud of Azure. And she had a fabulous game, and she's been doing extremely well. Um, I, it would have to take too long to understand what the points were there, and I'm not going to go into it. I'm simply going to say that um, I'm just, again, uh, Azra is a special player, and she's improved a great deal. Her inside game is very getting stronger and stronger. Um, obviously, we miss her. Obviously, you know, she, we would have loved to have had her on our side, but those things happen, and... Um, Again, uh, we'll move forward, and they'll move forward, and I, I, I can't go back to that stuff. I don't, I don't appreciate it, so I won't. Coach, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.
Congratulations, coach, and to the student athletes. The format will be an opening statement from Coach Ariama, and then we'll have questions for the student athletes. They will then be uh, excused, and then we'll have coach questions for the coach. Uh, coach Ariama, if you could begin with an opening statement, please. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> You know, I was telling the team um, before and, and after the game that, um, you know, with each game that you play in, in, in the tournament, it gets progressively uh, more difficult to, to do what you normally do, you know, and you have to be able to figure out how to win a game, um, whichever way the game is being played. And, you know, today wasn't one of those games where you just run up and down and shoot 25 threes and everything goes great. You have to grind it out, you know, and against a good team. That's, um, that's part of what this tournament's all about. So I'm proud of these guys because uh, uh, we had to do a lot of things today to win the game. And um, our defense was, was fabulous. And, uh, uh, and then these two guys here were, were really, really good um, at both ends of the floor. Thank you. Do we have questions for either Gabby or Nafisa? Raise your hand if you do, please. Over here, Doug. Uh, Doug Feinberg, DAP. For both of you guys, I mean, Coach talked about your defense, just the effort you guys put forth on that end of the court today to sort of shut down their guards and what pride you take in, in playing a really good defensive game. Gabby, if we could start with you. Yeah, um, I think at the beginning we were a little lazy with our press and kind of give them too many layups and open threes. So I think uh, once we slowed down, started forcing some tougher shots, um, making sure it was harder for Brown and Greenwell to catch the ball and just kind of got into our rhythm. <clears throat> and a piece? Um, I think there was a lot of times during the games where we were really, really good at our defense. And then there was a couple times um, where we slipped a little bit. But I think overall, um, we did a great job, especially keeping um, Brown and um, Greenwell uh, guarding them with one and a half people, really staying on them. I think we did a good job of that. Thank you. Additional questions for our student athletes? Up here in the front. Jim Fuller, New Haven Register. Gabby, can you address at the end of the first half, they were within 12, kind of staying close and scrapping and a couple threes, and then you hit that jumper at the end of the half and showed an awful lot of emotion after making that, that shot. Um, yeah, I think the beginning of the game, we got out to a quick start and then it was almost like we didn't expect them to fight back. Like, this isn't the Sweet 16. So I think we were just trying to win the game a little too quickly and all at once. So uh, we just uh, at the end of the second quarter, I think we just started you know, taking it one position at a time and started building our momentum. So that was kind of a, a good way to go into halftime. Thank you. Other questions for our student athletes? Pete in the back. Uh, for Gabby, it's Pete Doherty all many times. Uh, Gabby, there, when, uh, there were situations where they were making you know, little mini runs at you. They closed the gap a little bit. Is it up to you and Kia to kind of keep things calm on the court? Yeah, uh, I think so. Um, you know, just kind of regaining control of the tempo and make sure that they're playing at our pace and we're not playing at theirs because when they start to go on those runs, it can be really easy for us to get caught, caught up in, in it. And... Um, then that's when things get out of con control and they start gaining more momentum. So it's kind of up to us to regain it. Over here on the left. Uh, Chris Hanna, Daily Campus. Uh, and our presser five minutes ago, Coach McCallie compared Gabby uh, to Maya Moore. What, is, what, kinda, what does that kind of comparison mean to you? Maya Moore without the outside shot. Let's just throw that in there. <laughs> Make, sure. <laughs> Make sure we know. Um, I mean, it, it's a huge honor to even be in the same sentence as her. Uh, I think it's, I don't know, I, I would never call myself Maya Moore, but um, that is a huge compliment. Question over here on the right. Um, Keon from Keon from Key Visions. Um, it's for everybody. Um, what's your guys' mindset going to this game against South Carolina? Gabby, we'll start with you. Um, I mean, the last time we played them, we kind of got out to a really early run, so. I don't think any of us are expecting it to be that easy. Uh, we know that they're going to put up a fight. You know, they don't. Asia doesn't want her, you know, career to be over, college career to be over uh, on Monday. And we know that they're going to put up a, a fight, and it's it's going to be a it's going to be a battle. And Afisa. 
Yeah, like Gabby said, um, I mean, it's the time of the year where everyone is fighting for their season, so it's going to be a good game regardless. So we know that they're going to come out with their A game, and we're going to come out with ours. And um, like she said, we're just going to play as hard as we can and see what happens. Thank you. Question here to the left. Um, Howard Mendel with High Post Hoops. Uh, Gabby, question for you. Having uh, seen Lexi today, and now you've seen Jordan Canada a couple of <laughs> times over the past calendar year, uh, two players projected to go in the first round along with you. Hoping you could uh, give me a sense of what, what the differences are, the challenges of facing them both offensively and defensively. Um, I think Brown's a little more physical. She's um, a lot stronger and can get her way into the basket. Uh, you know, in a more physical way. And I think Jordan is just so quick and is probably, you know, one of the best finishing guards, I think, in the country. Uh, they both have great outside jump shots. Um, but I mean, you know, especially watching what Canada did last night against Texas was really impressive. Uh, so, I mean, they're similar, but, you know, very different builds, very different uh, games. Any additional questions for our student athletes? Seeing none, we thank you for being here and wish you luck on Monday. Thank you. At this time, we have questions for Coach Ariema. Please raise your hand. Yes, sir. Marvin Chambers, 4.0 Sports Media. First and foremost, happy belated birthday, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> You've been in this situation numerous times. You control the X's and O's. How do you control the emotion of your team going forward, being that a lot of these top-ranked teams have been knocked off in the NCAA? Well, <clears throat> I mean, that's one of the, I think, that's one of the few things that um, the players can control is, is the emotional state that they're in. Um, I think sometimes um, uh, players get a little, uh, you know, you want players to be emotional. This is an emotional game, and and obviously you need that to be to be successful. But I think sometimes players get overly worked up for a game, and and then you know they play a little too quickly, a little too fast to try to get too much done in a short period of time. Um, the, the only thing you can control is, is your approach. You know, um, today we didn't make a lot of shots that we normally make, so you can't control whether the ball goes in or not once you shoot it. Um, but you can control the approach that you take going in. And, and when you're dealing with, um, you know, when you're dealing with kids at this age, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, so you, you got to practice it all year long. It's not something that you get to the tournament and you go, hey, we need to be in control of our emotions. You got to work on that from, from day one. Thank you. Over here to the left. Hi, Gino. Jeff Jacobs, Hearst Media in Connecticut. Could you talk a little about the specifics about what you wanted to accomplish against Lexi Brown today as far as li limiting a certain number of shots or where she was taken from there? I know you're switching like crazy and stuff. Could you just kind of, kind of elaborate what your goals were with her today? Uh, you know, I, I, we get asked a lot about, uh, coaches do anyway, about um, what's the matchup going to be, you know, who's going to guard so-and-so, as if, you know, one person is going to have to guard that kid the entire game. I, I don't know any really good player that can be guarded by one player. I mean, that's what makes them really good. Y you need a lot of help. So we try to, you know, whether it's, you know, Lexi Brown or whether it's uh, Asia Durr or, you know, any other great guard that we've played against, um, it's your team that has to do a good job defensively. So everybody's got to be aware where she's going, you know, um, you know, and just be on the same page, you know. You know when, when are we switching? Uh, which way are we forcing her off ball screens? And it becomes a team thing rather than, you know, just give her to say, Kia, you guard her. I mean, that's that's a little much to ask. So, um, 
she's she's really good with the ball, and and she's really really like Gabby said, she's a tough kid. And uh, when you got to make kids work really really hard, uh, it starts to wear down after a while. And I thought she had to work really hard for the for the shot she did get. Um, I thought our team our team just did a great job defensively on her. Question here to the right. Aiden Jolly with Upstate Courier. Considering how close they played with you guys in the first quarter, what type of adjustments did you have to make after that? Um, I mean, there aren't really a lot of adjustments that you make um, based on the score, you know? I mean, if we hold somebody to 14 points in a quarter, we think, like, we did a pretty good job. Then we try to figure out, all right, what are we not doing on the offensive end that's causing, you know, us some problems? And tonight it happened to be, um, when do we take that wide open shot that we got off the first pass, second pass, or third pass? And when you're our guys, you know, they get very anxious. So if you're not careful, you come down and it's one pass in a shot. Well, that's great when they're going in, but sometimes you have to, you know, you have to wait a little bit and move the defense a little bit. So if the shot doesn't go in, you have a chance to offensive rebound. And I thought we, we settled down a little bit in the second quarter, and I think that was the big difference. Question here to the right. Vicki Fulkerson from the New London Day in Connecticut. Gino, um, a, a lot was said about the Duke guards and their experience. They're both fifth-year seniors. Can you address um, G Gabby and Kia got an awful lot done today, their, their experience and how that helped you today? Yeah. <clears throat> We're fortunate that our two seniors are two of the better defensive players in the country, you know. So when um, – when we have really good matchups for them and we have a, a pretty good understanding of what we want to do, um, you know, we know we can count on those two every game. You know, Gabby's going to play great every game. And, and it just, you know, I say that and we have a game Monday night. So, um, but she plays at a certain level every big game. And Kia is just one of the toughest competitors that we've ever had at Connecticut. Um, so, I, I I mean, we knew going into the game that Duke wasn't going to be able to score a lot of points on us. I mean, they averaged 60, I think, something like that during the, during the tournament. So, uh, we knew that we could do a good job defensively. We were just worried about, will we make enough shots? And, you know, we made just enough, I guess. Doug, you have a question? Coach Doug Von Brigape, sort of picking back on that question a little bit, it's rare, I think, that you've had seniors that are that good defensively and maybe not sacrifice a little bit on the offensive end. Just talk about the two of them and their win total is obviously astronomical yeah. because of the teams you've had, but just what they've brought to this program for the last four years to may not be the flashy players, but doing things that you need to be successful. Right. Um, <clears throat> well, certainly there's nothing flashy about Kia. You know, she's just... Uh, a hard-working basketball player, and she takes great pride in her conditioning and the way she, um, you know, the way she competes and uh, has been able to play on a lot of great teams while she's been at Connecticut and hasn't really had to be that offensive player that a lot of our seniors end up being. And Gabby's, um, you know, she's – She's offensively, um, I don't know what the word is, she makes the easy plays um, and she makes the really difficult plays. And I don't know that there's anybody that has been able to do what she's done at both ends of the floor, make really difficult plays defensively look easy. And then on the offensive end, you know, just pass the ball to a guy that cuts for a layup. I mean, that's easy, but some people make that look hard. You know, um, she's, um, she's unique in a lot of ways. 
Question here to the right. Coach, Rebecca Fiorentino, Blue Devil Network. I know you've talked about Lexi before, but after seeing her play and her getting seven steals against you guys, how do you see her as a pro prospect and playing at the next level? Well, I, I know everybody's been talking about her as being one of the best guards in the country. Um, I thought she was when she was a freshman and a sophomore at, uh, at Maryland. You know, I thought she was one of the better players in, the, in America. Um, and I'm, and I'm sure the next level that she goes to, um, she'll be able to handle herself great. She'll have a little more help on the floor, you know? So there'll be more good players that can score. So that'll take some of the pressure off for her to have to do everything in some ways. Um, but all the things that, that guards do, I mean, she's good defensively. She gets into the lane and she's got great range on her threes. And, um, I would, you know, at that next level that she's gone to, um, there really is a, a tremendous need for really, really, really good point guards. And I think she'll, she'll add to that for sure. Thank you. We have time for one or two more. Do you know, given that uh, your uh, margins of victory have been a have been in the, the, the media lately. Let's <laughs> let's say that yeah. somebody's somebody's going to look at this score and go, "Oh my God, they only won by 13." What yeah. happened? Yeah. How, how would you respond to that? Um, that it's not as easy as we make it look sometimes. This is not easy stuff. And you know, this idea that well, they have all the best players. Of course, they should win every game by 40. I don't know, but that young lady from Duke could probably verify this, but every single kid in Duke's starting lineup probably was first team All-American. So when you're playing against pretty good players, you shouldn't be able to win by the numbers that we win by sometimes. And certainly not in the NCAA tournament. That makes no sense. Not at this stage of the tournament anyway. Um, but you know, you know, after the Quinnipiac game, somebody said, you know, that was just one of those games. We had to grind it out. I don't know if people talk about 25-point wins as a grind it out, but that's kind of where we are. That's the world that we've created. And um, we're just doing our part to make, you know, women's basketball a little more competitive. So, the, you know, there's probably a couple dopes out there that were waiting for a 60-point win so they could, they could weigh in, right? So we're just keeping them at bay for a little bit longer. One last question on the left. Uh, Spencer Levy, Duke Chronicle. Um, Liana Odom for Duke scored 22. Uh, what did you see out of her play tonight, today? Well, uh, I, I thought she did a terrific job of getting in the lane and, and causing us a lot of problems. You know, we were spending so much time um, getting out on, on Rebecca Greenwell and Lexi Brown that there were a lot of places to dribble the ball to, and she took advantage of that. You know, um, you, you're not going to beat a really good team like Duke and think that you're going to take everything away from them. You're going to have to give up something. You just got you to just choose, okay, this is what we're willing to live with. And she took advantage of it. You know, she's really good around the basket. She's really athletic. Um, I'm sure, you know, if she starts making jump shots, She'll be really, really a handful for everybody. But um, uh, I think she's, she's only a sophomore, right? Yeah, she's got a, a, great, um, a great future. Um, and you know, it's nice to know that there's a, a, a defensive player or a great athlete coming out of modern day instead of just guys who shoot the ball. <laughs> so I was kind of thrilled to see that. I was starting to lose my faith in Catholic schools. Coach, thank you very much for joining us. We're out of time for additional media inquiries with UConn. Please see Anna. Coach, good luck to you on Monday.